Gemstones are more than the sum of their atomic parts. They possess monetary value, ka-ching. They hold cultural value, too. Gems can be given as gifts, symbols of love and devotion, or they can be hoarded as symbols of wealth and power. And when gemstones are added to decorative objects like jewelry or extremely cool sphinx talismans, then they can find themselves attached to all kinds of fascinating legends about historical figures like da -da -da -da, Napoleon Bonaparte, famed military commander, French emperor, and dude associated with a lot of famous gemstones. Napoleon didn't just concern himself with Europe. Like like other emperors before him, he looked to North Africa too. His successful invasions of Egypt led to Egyptian and Middle Eastern influences and French fashions from the era. And this wasn't the last time that happened. Check out our King Tut video for more info. Napoleon himself wasn't immune to Egyptian fashions. Legend has it, the Sphinx talisman was commissioned by the man himself as a good luck charm. The first thing you notice is definitely the Sphinx figure. It's carved out of clear quartz or rock crystal. There are patterns of rubies and emeralds on the underside of the base, and sapphires embedded on the curved outer base. Some experts believe the pattern of the gemstones send a message from Napoleon to his wife Josephine. Today, Roman think. How romantic. A semi-morbid Napoleonic gem is the Regent Diamond. One story has this gem being discovered by a slave in a mine, and he hid it in an open wound in his leg. Ouch. The slave was at some later point murdered by a sea captain. The diamond was stolen by the captain and eventually sold from merchant to merchant until it wound up in the French royal family and was set in the crown of Louis XV. Of course, it was stolen again during the French Revolution. Funny how giant diamonds have a way of getting stolen. But Napoleon got the thing back and had the gem set in the pummel of his sword. Napoleon was a huge fan of Charlemagne, aka Charles the Great. He was pretty much the biggest deal in Western Europe circa 800 AD. According to the legend, this amulet was found around Charlemagne's neck when his tomb was opened several hundred years after his death in 1814-80. Of course, there's no proof it actually belonged to Charlemagne, but it does date to his time period and it's still an amazing piece of jewelry. Some experts believe those two pieces of wood are the true cross, and even if it's not, it's over 1200 years old and is surrounded by sapphires, emeralds, and pearls. Oh my. The Bishop of Aachen, that's where Charlemagne was buried by the way, gave it to Empress Josephine as thanks for Napoleon's returning relics to the church that were stolen during the French Revolution. Josephine then gave it to her daughter, who eventually gave it to her son, Napoleon III. It survived through more upheaval, went to England, and back to France, finally making its way to the city of Reims in 1919. Sadly, for continent-hungry military leaders, the ancient crown of Charlemagne was destroyed during the French Revolution. So, Napoleon did what any emperor does. He commissioned a new crown for his coronation. There was something he wanted for the crown that he couldn't get. The Sansi Diamond, a 55.23 carat yellow diamond. That was another gemstone that had been in the French monarchy for a few hundred years, but got lost in the French Revolution. It eventually resurfaced and was ultimately purchased by the Louvre where it resides today. Have teenage boys from San Dimas, California ever taken you on a most excellent journey through time? Tell us about your adventures at the Waterloo Amusement Park down in the comments. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on quartz, diamonds, and more, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.